India has decided to join the Artemis Accords, a non-binding international agreement on civil space exploration and sustainable use, which is designed to guide civil space exploration and use. The Artemis Accords are grounded in the 1967 Outer Space Treaty and aim to reinforce and complement it. The agreement is a set of principles, guidelines, and best practices applicable for the safe exploration of the Moon and ultimately expand space exploration to Mars and beyond. The Artemis program is NASA's initiative to return humans to the Moon, in which it aims to land the first woman and the next man on the Moon. ISRO or the Indian Space Research Organization and NASA have also agreed to a joint mission to the International Space Station in 2023. The Artemis Accords are US-led initiative, and India is the 27th country to sign the agreement. The agreement could give a significant boost to India's space exploration ambitions. The signing of the Artemis Accords aims to boost cooperation between India and the US and explore the domain beyond the boundaries of Earth. What is the Artemis program and what is its goal? The Artemis program is a robotic and human moon exploration program led by NASA, along with three partner agencies. ISA referred to as the European Space Agency, JAXA called as the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and ISSE referred to as the Canadian Space Agency. The program's long-term goal is to establish a permanent base on the Moon to facilitate the feasibility of human missions to Mars. The Artemis program is organized around a series of Space Launch System missions or SLS missions, which will increase in complexity and are scheduled to occur at intervals of a year or more. NASA and its partners have planned Artemis 1 through Artemis 5 missions, later Artemis missions have also been proposed. The Artemis program is a renaming of several earlier activities NASA was already undertaking to return humans to the moon. The program aims to place astronauts on the lunar surface and develop an ongoing presence there. Ultimately, the Artemis program wants to set up a sustainable presence of astronauts on the moon, sending a crew up to the lunar surface once every year. The program also aims to use the moon as a stepping stone for a mission to Mars. But you can ask this question, what are the challenges of establishing a permanent base on the moon? So the answer is, establishing a permanent base on the moon poses several challenges, including a. Radiation. The moon has no atmosphere or magnetic field to protect against radiation from space, which can be harmful to humans and equipment. b. Temperature extremes. The moon's surface temperature can vary from minus 173 degrees Celsius to 127 degrees Celsius, which can cause damage to equipment and make it difficult for humans to survive. c. Meteorite impacts. The moon is constantly bombarded by meteoroids, which can cause damage to equipment and pose a risk to human life. d. Resource requirements. Establishing a settlement on the moon requires a significant amount of resources, including water, oxygen, food, and building materials. a. Structural engineering. Building habitats on the moon requires structural engineers to design and build structures that can withstand the harsh lunar environment. f. Coordination and integration. Establishing a permanent base on the moon requires extensive coordination and integration of various projects to ensure their systems will work together. Despite these challenges, NASA and other space agencies are working to overcome them and establish a permanent base on the moon as part of the Artemis program. This raises a new question which is, what kind of technology will be needed to sustain human life on the moon? The answer to this, to sustain human life on the moon, several technologies will be needed, including a. Oxygen production. Oxygen is essential for human survival, and it can be produced on the moon using a process called electrolysis, which involves splitting water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. b. Food production. Growing food on the moon will be necessary to sustain human life. This can be achieved using hydroponics, a method of growing plants without soil, or by using lunar soil as a growing medium. c. Water recycling. Water is a precious resource on the moon, and recycling it will be necessary to sustain human life. This can be achieved using a closed-loop water system that collects and purifies wastewater. d. Energy production. Solar power will be the primary source of energy on the moon, as it is abundant and readily available. Other potential sources of energy include nuclear fission reactors and beamed power. a. Waste management. Managing waste on the moon will be essential to prevent contamination and maintain a healthy living environment. This can be achieved using a variety of methods, including incineration, composting, and recycling.
f radiation protection protecting humans from the harmful effects of radiation on the moon will be necessary this can be achieved using radiation shielding materials such as water polyethylene nasa and other space agencies are currently researching and developing these technologies to sustain human life on the moon as part of the artemis program okay but how does the lack of gravity on the moon affect plant growth so, the lack of gravity on the moon affects plant growth in several ways, including a. Meristematic competence. Studies have shown that exposure to simulated fractional gravity conditions with a magnitude of 0.17 grams moon gravity produces substantial alterations in root meristematic cell growth and proliferation parameters, leading to the disruption of the meristematic competence during early plant development. b. Cell growth and proliferation. Plants grown under moon gravity would suffer similar meristematic competence loss as those grown under microgravity, but in plants grown under mass gravity, meristem cell cycle and cell growth balance will be similar to those observed under earth gravity. c. Gravitropism. Gravity influences the direction of plant growth and the pattern of development, from seedlings to adult plants, and even gravitational effects on in vitro plant cell cultures have been reported. d. Lunar soil compaction. Lunar soil packs tightly when wet, making it difficult for plants to take root. Reduced gravity. Studies on the effects of reduced gravity on plant physiology and development are limited, but it is important to understand plant biology at the lunar and Martian levels of gravity, as plants are likely to be part of bioregenerative life support systems on these missions. Overall, despite these challenges, researchers are exploring ways to grow plants on the moon, including using hydroponics, a method of growing plants without soil, and using lunar soil as a growing medium. More research is needed to develop sustainable and efficient methods of growing plants on the moon. If you think the video is informative, press the like button and share this video with others. Thank you and always be good.